regular season is over after four grueling months, and it's time for postseason. Hello and welcome to the Bison Basketball Show. I'm Brian Sean. The North Dakota State men's basketball team hit the road for the final weekend of conference play, hoping to get the bad taste of back-to-back -back home losses out of their mouths. A tough challenge against South Dakota and Purdue Fort Wayne, starting with the Coyotes. The Bison beat South Dakota to open the conference schedule back in December and starting off the game on a 9-0 run, Sam Greasel, a couple of early baskets as NDSU shot 48% from the field in the first half. After South Dakota closed the gap just before halftime off the miss, Dangu the emphatic follow-up jam. He scored six of his eight points in the first 20 minutes as North Dakota State took a four-point lead going into the locker room. Junior forward Tyson Ward had a career night carrying the Bison offense, getting the feet inside for two. He scored 28 points, hitting five three-pointers as the margin was pushed to eight. South Dakota would roar back with a 14-2 run. Tristan Simpson with the steal and in transition buries the jumper. He scored a team-best 20 points, playing all 40 minutes. Midway through the second half, the Bison get back within three. Jared Samuelson hesitating and then knocking down the three, but NDSU shot just seven of 24 from outside the arc and the Coyotes would finish the game strong outscoring the Bison 37 to 20 to finish the game Tyler Peterson the acrobatic finish at the rim he chipped in with 15 USD shot 50 percent in the second half to pull out the 75 65 victory North Dakota State was limited to just 30 percent shooting in the second half losing its third straight game the team looked to bounce back in the regular season finale at Purdue Fort Wayne. One point game midway through the first half. Tyson Ward coming up with the loose ball and taking it all the way in for the acrobatic finish and the foul. He posted his third double double in conference play with 11 points and 10 rebounds. Sophomore Jordan Horn provided a spark off the bench. Playing in his first game since January 24th, he buries the three, a part of a 10-0 run as the Bison took an 11-point lead into the locker room. In the second half, NDSU would push the lead to 13 as Vinny Shahid knocks down the open three, but the Bison shot just 23% in the second half as the Mastodons made a late run to tie the game. John Conchar tipping at his own miss with under 30 seconds left. He had 17 points and 15 rebounds in his final home game. North Dakota State one final shot to win it in regulation Shahid creating space with the dribble and popping the three with time winding down, hitting with .4 seconds left to win it in dramatic fashion. The Bison picking up the road victory 69-66 to finish league play 9-7, earning the four seed for the conference tournament. You need as much momentum as you can get. Um, and it's just, you know, coming in with that winner's mentality. You know, uh, coming off, you know, beating one of the a team that's sitting seated in front of you. Uh, it's kind of big and, you know, just ride that wave and take over. You definitely want to go into Sioux Falls with some confidence. And I think that win does that for us. Uh, we know that the next one is pretty important as well. Um, try to take it day by day now. We now welcome in North Dakota State men's basketball coach David Richmond. The Bison getting ready for postseason play after finishing 9-7 and seven in uh, Summit League action this year. And Dave... Peaks and valleys, I think you have to say the last uh, few weeks have, 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 that's a good description of it. One five in a row, lost three in a row, and then you pick up a big road win here to end the, end the regular season. What do you make of that? Yeah, and it's been some really high peaks. You know, we've had some really good stretches, but unfortunately when you have those valleys against, you know, really good teams, they can cost you, and that's what's really happened. And, you know, going back to the South Dakota State game, and we weren't able to close some things out in the second half, and turned around again, competed for a good stretch against Omaha, weren't able to close that one out, we competed for uh, a really good stretch early in, the, in that first half against USD, weren't able to close that one out, and you can see it's getting to be a little bit of a, uh, a, of a routine here that we're talking about, a, a, not a good routine, but so proud of our guys the way we were, we were able to respond at Fort Wayne on Saturday. You know, you think about that, that was a place we hadn't won in about six years. It was a senior night for John Conchar, so really proud of the way our guys uh, played. Down the stretch there, you have a lead, all of a sudden they come back to tie it, and I'm sure you're thinking, okay, how are we going to handle this? You take a timeout, you put it in Vinny Shahid's hand, and he really delivered. I think that was a big shot for his confidence as well. No doubt, and, and you know, gotten asked that obviously a couple times since that shot too, and um, Vinny's a great leader, um, he's a great human being, and he's got that it factor. You know, you hear about it in athletics all the time, and, and if you look that up, what's the definition? It, it's, there isn't really a definition, but, uh, you know, going back to the first time we played Fort Wayne, he hit the shot to put us into overtime, and um, not necessarily the way we thought it would go down, and, uh, but, you know, we'll certainly take that result and make no mistake about it. 
the one thing I think you realize and recognize from every team right now in the league is everybody looked a little tired the last couple weeks of the year. You can kind of see fatigue with everybody is setting in, and now everybody has the week to get prepared where you're trying to play three games in three games or three games in four days. As a coach, how do you manage this week? Because I know that's something that, that has been kind of a tough thing and a touch-and-go thing for you over the years. No doubt about it, but I think it's, it's so important. You can talk about a game plan. You can talk about this, that, and the other. The biggest thing that I've learned is clear minds and fresh legs. And if you go into that feeling good about yourselves, and that's why that shot was big for us too. It gives us some, a positive momentum boost to going into a uh, obviously a crucial week of practice. But I think the big thing for us is to certainly understand the game plan against Oral Roberts, but to be feeling good, to be feeling fresh. And, and I think it's two things. You got a week or almost, you got over a week to prepare, but also like this is what you do at all four. And, and so you get a boost, you know, going into that summer league tournament that, uh, that we're excited about. Oral Roberts, a team that you swept in the regular season, but both games were very competitive and came down to really the last five minutes and your guys made more plays. Emmanuel Nezakwesi back in the lineup likely for them in that contest. What do you make out of ORU? Because as you've said before, that first one is the most important one. Then anything can happen if you can get that one. Yeah, absolutely. But this is this is obviously no matter what, or you would have our full attention just because of the way both games have, have been so tight. And uh, you know we made a lot of shots uh, in, in both of those games. We also feel like we missed some pretty good ones in the first half at their place. And, and now you throw in a really talented plays, player and as a quasi and. Um, you know, I would expect Kearns to play just because of the time of the year. And so this is going to be as healthy as a, a roster of the Golden Eagles have been, and, but we're excited. You know, I think we've, we have been over the course of the last nine games playing a really good brand of basketball. Uh, we just got to make sure we're consistent. We're able to finish things out uh, when we have that t opportunity and if we have that opportunity. Well, good luck this weekend, Coach. It's always fun. This is a fun time of the year. We'll see you in Sioux Falls. They call it March Madness for a reason. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. That's all right. Dave Richmond joining us here on the Bison Basketball Show. Stay with us. Jeff Colhane, the Bison play-by-play -play radio man, stops in studio. We'll get his thoughts heading into the Summit League Tournament in Sioux Falls after this. The Bison Basketball Show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Nodak Insurance Company and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. Jeff Colhane, Bison play-by-play -play radio man on the men's side joining us here. The Bison men, the four seed, taking on the fifth seeded Oral Roberts in the opening round of the mm -hmm. Summit League Tournament. What do you make of the draw overall and, and just the tournament from an overall standpoint, one through eight? I think it's interesting, right? I mean, you look at, on paper, the straight matchup with North Dakota State and Oral Roberts, and right away you think, well, it's uh, an Oral Roberts team the Bison have beaten both times this year. But... No Emmanuel Nezakwesi, one of the top players in the league. So you instantly throw a unique wrinkle, a wrinkle into uh, the matchup. And it's uh, one of those games you look at and you can say, North Dakota State, if they get things to go their way, they can win by 10 to 15 points. Oral Roberts, if they get it going with Nezakwesi, no banner, they could potentially do the same. And overall, I know SDSU is the favorite, and they're going to have the home crowd and the home court feel, but I think this is one of the more... I don't know if wide open is the right term, Brian, but uh, competitive tournaments on the men's side we've seen it some time. Yeah, you even look on the other side of the bracket with Omaha, the, the two against North Dakota, the seven, or mm -hmm. South Dakota, the six, four way, and those could go either way going in to, to Monday night as well. The one thing about Oral Roberts that North Dakota State did really well, especially at home, was shoot the ball well yeah. from the perimeter. And, and with ORU zone, yep. that is where if you can make some threes early and get them out of that zone, which NDSU did do in the second matchup, you can create some things in your favor, but you gotta be able to make shots, and that's not always an easy thing to do down in Well, Falls. therein lies the team chess match between Paul Mills and David Richmond. And if I'm Paul Mills, do I even play the zone? Do I even go there seeing what they saw in the first eight minutes of that basketball game a few weeks ago in Fargo? As you mentioned, the Bison shot Oral Roberts out of the zone. They hit eight threes in the first eight minutes of that basketball game. And then ORU went man to man and, you know, NDSU still had success, but it definitely slowed down. I'll be curious to see, Brian, if Oral Roberts even tries to go to that unique-looking zone, the amoeba-like 1-3-1. Um, they could just scrap it all together and say, hey, we're going to go man up and see what happens. For North Dakota State, what are the biggest keys, Jeff? Because, I mean, you're talking about a, a team where, yeah, you have some guys that have been there, but you have no seniors, and you have 
five, six guys that have mm -hmm. not played in this before. So all of a sudden, that first 10 minutes of this game right. <laughs> could be a little interesting on both sides. ORU's kind of in the yeah. same boat. I think it's you got to play a full 40 minutes. And you look at the last four games for North Dakota State going into this Summit League tournament, and you could say, this, this might be a dumb thing to say, but I'm going to say it anyway because uh, we're, we're analysts and trying to break it all down. You could argue the Bison have been the best basketball team in the league in the first half of games the last two, three weeks of the season. you got to play full 40 minutes. And NDSU, over the last three or four games or so, have only shot right around 25 or 26 percent uh, from the field in those contests in the second half. So uh, I think... The newcomer uh, uh, aspect of this, uh, I think it's going to be okay for the Bison, especially when you have a guy like Vinny Shahid, who is an all-Summit League performer this season. Going to come down to hitting some shots at crunch time. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. Those four first-round games will be a lot of joy. Hey, yeah. thank you for the time. Oh, we'll great. see you in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Safe we'll, travels. Have, you too. <laughs> Dodge Everybody. <the> snow. <laughs> Everybody. It's relentless. We can't get away from it. <laughs> Jeff Colhane joining us here on the Bison Basketball Show. We're back chat with Marin Walseth and recap the Bison women's contest from this past week after this. The North Dakota State women's basketball team picked up a big win at home to secure its spot in the conference tournament this coming weekend and tried to keep the momentum going on the road. A tough challenge to start the trip against one of the top mid-major programs in the nation, South Dakota. The Bison secured a spot in the Summit League tournament after a loss from Purdue Fort Wayne earlier in the day and gave the Coyotes all they could handle early on. Michelle Geislerova scored eight first quarter points, including a pair of threes. Late in the first half, Sofia Javalovic using the screen and knocking down the jumper. She chipped in with 10 points as NDSU shot 54% in the first half. South Dakota responds with a 9-2 run to push the lead back to 8. Liv Corngable banking in the 3 at the buzzer to give the Yotes a 38-30 lead at halftime. In the second half, Geislerova continues her hot shooting. She hit six triples overall and scored a game-high 20 points. But a 17-3 run from USD late in the third quarter would put the game out of reach. Hannah Shervin, a force inside all game long, had 24 points off the bench as South Dakota wins it 76-57, outscoring the Bison 50-14 in the paint. NDSU finished up the regular season at Purdue Fort Wayne but struggled in the first quarter, shooting just 18%. In the second quarter, the Bison rallied to take the lead. Tyra Spencer driving inside with the shot clock winding down, all apart of a 9-0 run. Shatoya Sanders, a force in the paint for the Mastodons, scored a game-high 22 points and Purdue Fort Wayne led a low-scoring contest 27-23 at halftime. In the second half, after falling behind by 9, NDSU answers back with a 7-0 spurt. Riley Nudell scored a team 14 points on 5 of 7 shooting, but the Dons outscored NDSU 30 to 14 in the fourth quarter, hitting 12 of 16 shots. DeJour Young added 16 points, including three triples, as Purdue Fort Wayne pulls away for the 66-46 victory. North Dakota State will be the seventh seed in the Summit League tournament coming up this weekend. We had a non-conference conference, and this is the postseason tournament, and it's a really exciting time. We always say that it's the best time of the year, and we're just really excited to play in the Premier Center and just uh, play our best basketball by the end of the year. So we're ready to bring it all and just compete. I think that we need to like mentally prepare. Like we just got done playing USD, and that's obviously who we play first. So I think like that will help us out a little bit, but just like some focus and some rest, I think. We'll have a good chance going in on Saturday. We now welcome in North Dakota State women's basketball coach Marin Walseth. The Bison women will be the seventh seed in Sioux Falls this weekend, uh, taking on South Dakota and Fort Wayne last week. And I tell you guys, South Dakota hung right in there with one of the top teams in the league, played right with them, had an early lead. I think it was an eight-point game at halftime, and even into the third quarter was still just hanging in. But then I think maybe depth got a little worn out towards the end. I think you're right, and honestly, I was very pleased with our energy, our effort, the way we competed the whole 40 minutes, but specifically how we started the game. Um, the attention to detail, uh, the diving on the, loose, on the loose balls, diving on the ground, and just how we stuck to our game plan of, of curling screens and, and doing what we do really well. I was very pleased with that. You know, then they bank in a three going into halftime, yeah. but yet, you know, there's still a lot of uh, positive energy in the locker room. and. You know, in the third quarter, it's a 10-point ball game. Very pleased with the effort. I think going to Fort Wayne to finish out that road trip, I think you knew that was going to be tough because of the tight turnaround and, and playing so many kids so many minutes so hard against South Dakota. And 
Did you sense maybe your team ran out of gas a little bit in the second half just because of all the wear and tear of the season? We did, and going into the game, I think the coaches knew this was going to be a tough game for us. The short turnaround, playing on senior night, playing in a game that we cannot improve our seed, yet they are playing for their tournament lives. So certainly we were at two opposite ends of the spectrum as far as emotion is concerned, um, and, and it was a challenging game for us, and at the end, um, we did run out of gas. I asked Dave Richmond the same question about how I just think throughout the league, it, it's so tough as a coach to manage your team through the rigors of an entire, not only non-conference, but then the conference schedule. Is, is the managing the week to get to the tournament is keeping legs fresh but still being prepared to play. How, how are you doing that this week? We're actually giving our players a decent amount of time off, giving the short numbers and the short bench that we do have. Also, with the fact that we just played South Dakota. So the preparation is a little fresher in our minds. We've each only had one game since our last game against South Dakota. We don't, we don't expect a ton of different things. Um, so I think we were able to give our players a couple of days off, do some individual workouts so that we are as fresh as we can be um, for this third season of basketball. And I think maybe the difference from for this year is pretty much everybody now on the roster that is playing minutes, with the exception of maybe Circling Rimdahl and then Sofia Javalovic, who was with the team but not playing, everybody's played at least down there, which that's got to help, I think, right, with everything that's going on? I think it certainly does, you know, having the experience of being in the venue uh, for especially somebody like Michelle, who's a shooter. Um, but then you take uh, C and, and Soph, and those two players don't seem to be phased by a whole lot. So I'm not concerned about their lack of experience in the venue. I think they'll be more excited to be playing in the playoffs. All right, Marn, good luck against South Dakota on Saturday. We'll see you down there. Thank you much. Marn Walseth joining us here on the Bison Basketball Show. Stay with us. Play-by-play -play man on the women's side, Keith Brake, joins us in the studio next. Welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show, joined now by Keith Brake, the play-by-play -play man on the women's side for the radio broadcast. Says uh, the Bison women earned the seventh seed, take on South Dakota in the first round. A team that just played down on the road in Vermillion actually yeah. played pretty competitively against Keith. Maybe if there's one thing, at least you don't have to renew yourself to a game plan you haven't seen a team in a while. Right, yeah. I mean, the NDSU did a fantastic job of limiting the guards for uh, for South Dakota. Uh, Allison Arns only had two points in the game. Uh, Kira Tuffy early on was not much of a factor. Madison McKeever didn't score a ton. Where they lost the game was in the second half, Brian, when uh, they uh, they started uh, feeding the ball to Hannah Shervin, and Shervin is, I mean, there's nobody in the league that can match up with somebody who is six foot two, uh, probably six foot three, uh, has a ridiculous wingspan, just big, strong shoulders. She's an incredible athlete. She's going to be a handful on Saturday again. And that's going to be the challenge to keep them out of the paint. Bison really got hurt points in the paint, so mm -hmm. we know that's going to be the challenge. The other part, though, I think is trying to get this team some rest. We talked with Marn Walseth about it in the previous segment, how her team probably looked a little tired, a little gassed in that second half. It's been a grind, mm -hmm. and I think with these kids, I think, Trying to get some elongated time off is probably a key. Yeah, no doubt. Tyra Spencer in particular is exhausted. She's very limited in practice. Of course, uh, uh, her knee is just not going to give her much more uh, on the what is now unfortunately the tail end of her career. Uh, Emily Dietz is starting to feel the burn uh, in the post. Marina Fernandez has played heavy minutes. Michelle Geislerova has played 35 to 40 minutes pretty much every game. So uh, it's a very uh, a physical sport. You wouldn't think that, but there's a lot of wear and tear that goes on the body when you're asked to play 35, 38 eight minutes a night and North Dakota State's had to endure that with the same eight players pretty much all season. And now moving ahead with this first round matchup, maybe it is good though that they, the team played against South Dakota so competitively early and got out to a good lead and shots were starting to fall. That can be good for your confidence, but also probably gets the attention of South Dakota as well. Hey, we can't let this team hang around. We got to get we got to get ahead of them right away. Right, and especially when you got the day off, you want to take as, as much of an advantage of that as you can. So you you want to put the foot on the gas in the first half, and then try to dial it back a little bit if you get a big lead in the second half. If you're South Dakota, and when you're NDSU defending this group, you really got to pick your poison. You can take away Arns, then Duffy scores 15. You can take away McKeever, and then Lamb scores 15. You can take away Shervin. Well, nobody's been able to take away. Shervin 
sure of it yet, so maybe you can't, but uh, uh, this this group has got to play it. If you're North Dakota State, you've got to scrap almost immediate timeout to immediate timeout and try to win the game in stretches if you want to have any shot of hanging around in the final 10 minutes. But at the, at the same time, when you get down to tournament play, Keith, if at least you can hang around in the first 20 minutes and not find yourself under a significant double-digit deficit going into that third quarter, Usually it's when the other top seed, even though South Dakota has played so many big games in the career, maybe they would tighten up, you hope, a little bit to the point where you can at least give yourself a chance in that second. We have seen that before, especially, I mean, you see it maybe a little bit more on the men's basketball side than women's basketball, but it does happen where if you're hanging around at, at, at halftime, which North Dakota State has done against South Dakota this year, they've been around at the half. It's been that third quarter that's eaten them up as South Dakota starts to feel the tension because, you know, their NCAA tournament seating is on the line. They're being projected as a seven seed right now. Maybe they do tighten up. Maybe North Dakota State has a chance to take this to the final 10 minutes. All right. Thanks for the time as always. Keith, we'll see you down there. My pleasure, Brian. Stay with us on the Bison Basketball Show. We're back to wrap things up after this. The Bison Basketball Show on Midco Sports Network is presented by Nodak Insurance Company and Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Back to wrap things up as we get ready for the Summit League Tournament. All quarterfinal and semifinal games will be televised on Midco Sports Network as we get things started on Saturday. The seventh seeded Bison women will take on South Dakota to get the tournament started at about 2.30 on Saturday afternoon, while the NDSU men will play in the evening session on Sunday, taking on Oral Roberts in the 4-5 quarterfinal matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun. Enjoy the tournament, and we'll see you back here in a couple of weeks on the Bison Basketball Show.